I'm going to do something slightly different than most of my usual talks. And I'm going to sort of scope this one to, to kind of give advice and recommendations to people building metaverse tooling and experiences kind of right now and kind of in the next 12 months. So today I just want to uh, talk about um, building the metaverse and I want to walk through uh, a set of recommendations for um, a number of, of um, different kinds of applications and different different kind of tools that, that are useful right now. So I'm going to do something slightly different than most of my usual talks and I'm going to sort of scope this one to, to kind of give advice and recommendations to people building metaverse tooling and experiences kind of right now and kind of in the next 12 months. Um, so I want to kind of really focus on, on, on this time period because I think it's it's a super exciting moment. There's a ton going on um, and, and the builders that are making things now are going to help shape the future. So uh, I want to just give kind of um, some a bit of advice on uh, uh, sort of how to get there. So uh, I'm going to go through kind of a quick introduction, uh, talk about some principles, uh, talk about some spaces, then kind of get through kind of basic interactions that we have to get working, then uh, setting the stage for advanced interactions, and some ideas on how to how to develop that. Um, getting to, uh, uh, I have a, a few kind of like hack ideas for for things that people might make now um, that could be pretty useful in kind of speeding up the rest of the development. Uh, and then I want to talk a little bit about uh, authoring tools. Uh, I'm going to kind of meander through a lot of this, um, and this is kind of meant to be um, thinking a lot with with with, uh, with builders. Um, if there's any kind of uh, way of getting uh, questions, or like if you have any questions, like uh, definitely feel free to uh, add a, a towards the end. You know, the metaverse has, I think the metaverse has been developing itself over decades. You can think of like the early games and the early online experiences that uh, a lot of us shared as the kind of beginnings of this environment and the beginnings of the metaverse. Um, and they just the, the wiring of the metaverse has been really poor so far. It sort of forces you to get out of those experiences and maybe um, click a link somewhere, follow some readme instructions somewhere, download uh, some software and then kind of launch it. And so. Um, but it's, it's it's not quite what we've always wanted uh, in terms of the metaverse. But but a lot of the shared experiences and high quality um, engaging environments that uh, all of these games throughout decades gave us um, that's the kind of quality experience that we have to achieve with like this broader kind of seamless metaverse. And I think we're we're in the last couple of years we've made a ton of progress in in getting much closer to to that uh, that kind of vision. And it's a, you know a large variety of different applications and systems. Um, are getting us closer to this to this environment. So uh, again, this I want to talk about you know how to build things, uh, how to build things in the in the in the shorter term, um, and you know some recommendations for uh, for builders. Uh, so first, some principles. I think it's really critical that throughout all of this, and um, I'm gonna uh, now move my my uh, uh, screen share. Let's see. Uh, this way, I want to kind of like um, have some of the stuff in the background playing because I have some like really cool rooms to show you, um, and, and I'll kind of like dive into those in a little bit. Um, but the the um, you know I want to kind of reflect on some principles first. Um, composability is, I think, one of the key aspects of building uh, the metaverse in Web three. So what this is, relates to is instead of trying to build a single platform uh, that kind of does everything and that you keep adding features to and, and so on, um, the critical thing to do is to uh, create different composable pieces that can then be put together by other participants so that you as a developer, developer team um, can make a, a component that is a composable component that then can plug into what somebody else is making. Uh, this has been one of the defining features of Web3. Most of Web3 successful applications tend to be highly composable. You can think of the massive success of DeFi as really a great story of, of excellent composability and very good design in terms of how different components should be fitting together, all built by many different teams around the world, um, not coordinating, just building composable primitives um, and deploying them. So I really think the metaverse, uh, for it to be uh, an open environment, um, for it to be the metaverse that we all want, it has to be built up from that composability and I also think that if you bet on composability, uh, you can move dramatically faster than than any other kind of large scale platform. Um, the if you build composable primitives, they can be plugged together by many other people. 
um, and you can the, the thing you make can be dramatically more impactful. Uh, so you know, really lean into composability, and this might mean composability with the spaces. So it might mean kind of uh, author and create rooms that are themselves composable. So think of creating one room that can then be connected to other rooms or multiple rooms that can be put together into a building, uh, multiple um, buildings that can be put together into a city and, and so on. But also composability in terms of the interaction. So you can think of uh, perfecting a presence layer, uh, perfecting audio video, um, perfecting uh, programmable objects, perfecting um, different pieces of the, the metaverse experience and layering those experiences as composable primitives that you kind of add on as opposed to, again, uh, creating everything in, in, in one larger platform. Uh, the second principle I want to uh, uh, really stress is to build Web3 first. And so this means uh, these days um, that you should be creating uh, primitives that are not location addressed, but are then set content addressed, hash linked, um, or directly addressed in a blockchain. Uh, so this means make sure that the content is not, the content and the programs and so on um, are all public by default, they're verifiable. Um, and they're running in one of these public environments and public clouds. Um, so, you know, blockchains or things like IPFS and whatnot. And the reason for that is that uh, Web3 is, confers like these massive powers of um, locking systems open and enabling interoperability across many different applications. And they give, they, they really place the ownership in the users and creators' hands, as opposed to the platforms. Uh, so really going in, uh, and making things web first um, is going to make sure that this metaverse is actually uh, locked open uh, and it's in a great environment that, that we can all kind of um, really bet on in the long term, that it's not sort of gonna get uh, turned into a wall garden or an exploitative platform like uh, you know the social networks. Uh, the next thing I wanna stress is to iterate fast. Right now, there's a lot of teams working on, on this stuff. Um, everybody's uh, there's a ton of like really amazing things being built. Um, I really want to stress kind of uh, get to design a thing, make a thing and deploy it quickly uh, and then kind of publish it to the world and let that thing um, be used by others, uh, compose into some other experience or inspire others. Many times um, the greatest contribution that people make is to inspire many other groups to, to do um, in things a certain way or to take a certain approach and whatnot. Um, and so if you iterate past with the rest of the world, um, we'll all get there faster. Um, I think the the biggest, you know, the, the, the um, biggest risk I think for any kind of metaverse style application or, or, or environment uh, is to kind of take way too long to to um, ship something or to, to iterate with a, with a community um, that's kind of going to uh, lock them into a trajectory that, that um, may in the end create a, a super high quality experience in inside of a single game, uh, but it's not quite going to be the proper metaverse interlinked web style um, environment that, that allows uh, that composability. Uh, the next thing I, principle I, I really want to stress is to uh, drive the creation of compelling experiences. At the end of the day, the, the medium difference between a 2D website and kind of a 2D or 3D environment that, that you're participating in um, really the metaverse which is um, a more a physical place with like an actual um, physical metaphor and a, a more physical experience for uh, for participants and users uh, in that environment requires a much higher um, quality of engagement and it's always sort of about what you're doing in in, in the environment in the space so it could be that what you're doing is exploring a really compelling and interesting space um, but if the space is not interesting enough uh, and there's nothing to do, um, then that experience will kind of um, not be as compelling. Uh, so, you know, this is very different than the normal web. So in the normal web, you can create a website that's very simple and just has a lot of text and people will just read that website and read that text and, and get a lot of value out of that. In, in a kind of 2D or 3D environment, um, uh, you really kind of need to create uh, sort of like rich and compelling experiences that again, it doesn't need to be complicated or have a lot of stuff. It just has to be, um, uh, the space has to give people a reason to want to spend time in, in that environment. Again, it could be as simple as, as creating a super high quality space to explore. Um, but in reality, I think what this will lead to is um, 
really great interactions in, in spaces with other people. So kind of multiplayer um, audio video experiences and um, all kinds of games. So really leaning into creating uh, high quality um, uh, game kind uh, game type of experiences uh, is gonna help a lot. Uh, the last principle I wanna stress is related to creating compelling experiences, but I really wanna stress uh, creating extremely high quality user experiences. Uh, the bar for uh, for quality and using a thing, once you hit 2D or 3D, it's just dramatically higher than a normal 2D website. Uh, if you're in a space, you want that that experience to be, um, you know, dramatically higher quality. And people are used to extremely high quality uh, user experiences in games. Uh, so if you um, pick up a console game or uh, even a PC game and so on, um, just the the quality of the experience of those those um, environments and of those experiences is so high that unless the metaverse approaches that and ideally exceeds it, um, then the metaverse will always feel kind of clunky and kind of um, not a great place to be and and, and it won't take off. So I, I really stress kind of, uh, if you're a team building in this environment, um, perfect and polish that experience and get it to be really high quality. Uh, and that'll speak volumes, that'll get a lot of um, people using it and so on. And at the end of the day, this comes down to good product choices, polish, uh, less is more, get, you know, focus on a few things that work extremely well and, and that um, people have a, a great user experience with.